In the prologue, Athena summons Poseidon and commands him to desist from hindering the progress and evolution of humanity by wreaking destruction upon them at sea. Poseidon, however, is reluctant to comply with her directive. Consequently, both deities consent to a contest, designating their respective champions. Athena foreshadows Perseus's impending arrival in Syria and a shipwreck near its coast. In Act 1, Scene 1, the characters Sirius, a servant in the Temple of Poseidon, and Diomede, a slave girl who serves and plays with Andromeda, are introduced. Sirius reports the sighting and wreck of a ship and hastens to inform Polydeion. During this scene, Perseus makes his entrance, embarking on a mission to rescue the shipwrecked men. Sirius returns accompanied by Iolaus, the crown prince, and soldiers led by Captain Deceits, who lie in ambush. Perseus arrives with Timaus and Smyrdas, merchants of Babylonia whom he has saved from the wreck. Iolaus emerges to arrest them as offerings for Poseidon. Struck by Perseus's noble presence, Iolaus befriends him. Polydeion then enters with King Phincus and orders Iolaus to arrest Perseus along with the merchants. The prince resists, but the priest persuades the soldiers and the captain to seize both Perseus and Iolaus. Perseus, wielding his magic shield, frightens away the soldiers and the priest. Recognizing Athena's influence in Perseus's actions, Polydeion compels Phineas to retreat. Iolaus then leads Perseus to his refuge. Act 1, Scene 3, features Andromeda, Praxilla, and Diomede. They discuss Andromeda's background, the cultural and religious life in Syria, and Andromeda's reaction to the merchant's capture. Iolaus enters, discovering Andromeda's admiration for Perseus, whom she has seen in a dream. Medes, the usher, informs Iolaus of Polydeion's impending complaint to the king. Act 2, Scene 1 introduces Cephus and Cassiopeia, who are deeply troubled by Polydeion's complaint against Iolaus. In an attempt to secure Iolaus's safety, they offer their treasures, precedence, pomp, and state to Polydeion, who demands Iolaus's head. As Polydeion wavers, Phincus threatens to turn against him, causing further tension. Iolaus admits to the alleged crime but boldly asserts that neither the temple nor Syria holds jurisdiction over Perseus. Cassiopeia incites Phincus to speak against Polydeion, and a tense negotiation ensues. The astute politician pacifies both parties by decreeing that Iolaus must produce Perseus. Iolaus consents to this within three days, much to Polydeion's displeasure, although Phineas reassures him. In Act 2, Scene 2, Andromeda rejoices at the news of Iolaus' safety but remains troubled by the captive's plight, challenging even the gods in her concern. Praxilla's attempts to counter Andromeda's arguments prove futile. Cephus arrives, leading to a heated debate with Andromeda over the intended sacrifice of the merchants. Andromeda equates herself with Poseidon, demanding the captives as her slaves and refusing to marry Phincus, declaring her love for Perseus instead. Infuriated, Cephus departs in anger, leaving Andromeda resolute in her decision to act independently. Act 2, Scene 3 depicts Perseus and Sidon enjoying the warmth of the sun when Iolaus arrives, informing Perseus of the events at court. Perseus agrees to face Polydeion and resolves to liberate the Babylonian merchants first. In Act 3, Scene 1, 
Andromeda's resolve becomes clear. She is adamant about going to the Temple of Poseidon to liberate the merchants before their sacrifice. Diomede highlights the peril of such an undertaking, but Andromeda, profoundly concerned for the prisoners, threatens to commit suicide if they are not rescued. Convinced by Andromeda's determination, Diomede agrees to accompany her and departs to prepare. Athene then appears to Andromeda, testing her resolve and willpower, and ultimately assures her of divine assistance. Following Athene's disappearance, Andromeda and Diomede set out for the temple. In Act 3, Scene 2, Sirius is caught in the act of fleeing with the valuables from the Temple of Poseidon when Iolaus and Perseus arrive. Iolaus enlists Sirius in their plan to release the captives. Sirius brings forth the prisoners, and Perseus breaks the chains of one of them. Andromeda and Diomede arrive with the same intent. Andromeda frees the remaining captive and sends them to a secret cave. Perseus, impressed by Andromeda's actions, recognizes her as his destined partner. In Act 3, Scene 3, Polydeon enters to find the captives gone and strikes the gong, heralding calamity. The shadow of Poseidon materializes, demanding the return of the victims and threatening Syria with destruction. He offers to avert this catastrophe only if Andromeda is exposed to his sea monster, Iolaus is sacrificed, and the house of Cephus is annihilated. Alarmed by the gong, the king, queen, people of Syria, and Phincus converge on the temple. Andromeda is accused of sacrilege. Cassiopeia disentangles herself, her husband, and her daughter from the priest's grasp and returns to the palace. The Syrians, siding with the priest, resolve to assault the palace the following day. Act 4, Scene 1 commences in the aftermath of a nocturnal assault on the people of Syria by both the Assyrians and the sea monster, unleashed due to the unfulfilled demands of Poseidon. Men and women, fleeing in terror, report the devastation wrought by the sea god's wrath. Therops enters, inciting the mob to ally with Polydeon against the royal household. Upon Polydeon's arrival, the rabble pledges their allegiance to Poseidon and his priest. Polydeon binds them to Poseidon's cause and leads them to the palace. In Act 4, Scene 2, Cassiopeia, upon hearing of the sea monster's havoc and the mob's approach, dispatches Diomede to warn Iolaus of the imminent peril and urge him to flee the country. However, Iolaus resolves to rescue his parents and sister. Perseus, stealing himself for the final confrontation, conceals his true intentions. In Act 4, Scene 3, the mob besieges the palace, intent on capturing the royal family. Confronted with the formidable palace guards, Polydeon persuades them to surrender Andromeda while sparing the royal couple. Nabassa, the captain of the Chaldean guard, convinces the king and queen to consent. Andromeda enters and submits herself to Polydeon, who pacifies the mob and orders her exposure to the sea monster. He then commands the seizure of Cephus and Cassiopeia. Polydeon's concluding speech reveals his descent into perversion, driven by ambition, pride, and self-importance. In Act 4, Scene 4, Phineas, skeptical of Poseidon's power, contemplates rescuing Andromeda and absconding with her to his country. As the mob arrives to lead Andromeda to the rocks, Phineas offers to save her and make her his wife. Andromeda, 
with steadfast resolve and obstinacy, resists his temptation. In Act 4, Scene 5, Andromeda is chained to the rock, awaiting the sea monster. Perseus remains nearby, vigilant and prepared for the creature's arrival. In Act 5, Scene 1, Andromeda, bound to the rock, reflects upon her actions through the lens of her suffering. She affirms her righteousness and steadfastly refuses to repent, although she begins to feel a sense of frustration and doubts Athene's benevolence. Sidon arrives to console her, bringing news of Iolaus's safety and Perseus's imminent arrival to rescue her. Perseus appears in the form of a golden cloud, prompting Sidon to depart. Perseus consoles Andromeda, slays the sea monster, and liberates her. Together, they proceed to the temple of Poseidon to save her parents and brother. In Act 5, Scene 2, Polydeon is preparing for the sacrifice of Iolaus, exhibiting an increasing perversion of character. He is depicted as the inhuman antagonist of Cassiopeia. Perissus arrives and reports the slaying of the monster. Due to the ambiguity in his report, Cassiopeia mistakenly concludes that Andromeda has been devoured by the monster and faints. Perseus enters with Andromeda, announces his identity, recounts his exploits, and liberates Iolaus, the king and the queen. The mob shifts their allegiance from Polydeon to their king, and the Babylonian merchants are freed. The king, queen, and Andromeda return to the palace. Polydeon attempts to confront Perseus, but the sea god fails him. The priest falls into a fit and envisions the evolution of Poseidon into Neptune, ultimately lying dead. Perseus elucidates the mystery of his nature, and Iolaus reminds Perseus that Phineas remains to be dealt with. In Act 5, Scene 3, the royal family rejoices, embodying the word pardon for their ops and deceits, who now swear loyalty to the king. Smyrdas receives his due punishment, while Turnors is rewarded. Phineas is also punished, with Perseus using the Gorgon's head to turn him to stone. Andromeda and Perseus expound upon the true nature of Athene and her consecration as the new deity in Syria. Their speeches fulfill the purpose of the epilogue.